Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, we are defining our threshold and challenging our limiting beliefs as we set boundaries we intend to hold firm and those we aspire to push. Boundaries help us move through life with protection while providing a safe way to measure our growth. It just might be time to outgrow your current position and move forward. This exercise isn't meant to box you in or make you feel trapped. Boundaries are evolutionary, and when you feel ready, can shape shift to meet your next trial. The goal we're setting for this topic is ownership. You own the next move instead of letting your circumstance own you. Have you ever uttered the words, I don't know, it just happened? Have you ever felt like you're just following life and jumping hurdles when prompted? Do you feel like life is leading you? If you're shaking your head and you've been pushed, pulled, prodded, devalued, overlooked, belittled, controlled, do you want me to keep going? Then keep listening. Healthy boundaries are personal and a form of self-care. It helps create clear guidelines, rules, limits of how you would like to be treated. So many times we expect people to treat us the way we want to be treated, but yet we never communicate what that looks like. We keep this and all the ways we've been threatened, swirling around in our heads, making us more vulnerable instead of stronger. Communicating your boundaries is a crucial step and one we'll dive into. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. And before we can look at pushing said boundaries, we need to first identify where we need to establish our first boundary. Dr. Joe Nash teaches us how to set healthy boundaries and build positive relationships found at positivepsychology.com. Healthy boundaries define what is appropriate behavior in our relationships, behavior that keeps both parties safe. And setting healthy boundaries is crucial for self-care and positive relationships. But let's first understand what boundaries are. Boundaries differ from person to person and are mediated by variations in culture, personality, and social context. Boundaries appropriate in a business meeting would seem irrelevant in a nightclub or with old friends. Setting boundaries defines our expectations of ourselves and others in different ways in different kinds of relationships. Our skin is an obvious physical boundary. But we have other kinds of interpersonal boundaries too, including a limit that extends beyond our body. Consider what happens when somebody stands too close for comfort. We often describe it as invading our personal space. But definitions of personal space vary according to culture, the type of relationship involved, and social context. Comfortable boundaries with your partner at home would not be appropriate in a different social context, like attending a business dinner together. Similarly, the level of physical intimacy deemed appropriate for expression in public spaces varies widely across cultures. Setting healthy boundaries requires self-awareness. We need to be clear about our expectations of ourselves and others and what we are and are not comfortable with in specific situations. Setting healthy boundaries requires good communication skills that convey assertiveness and clarity. Assertiveness involves expressing your feelings openly and respectfully. It doesn't entail making demands, but it requires people to listen to you. Setting healthy boundaries requires you to assert your needs and priorities as a form of self-care. Here are three easy steps to setting healthy boundaries. Step one, be as clear and as straightforward as possible. Don't raise your voice. Step two, state your need or request directly in terms of what you'd like rather than what you don't want or like. Step three, Accept any discomfort that arises as a result, whether it's guilt, shame, or remorse. The third step is common for people with poor boundaries, codependency issues, or are people pleasers. 
Sometimes adults have been raised by childhood caregivers who taught them that expressing their needs is bad and selfish. However, not accepting the discomfort that comes from setting healthy boundaries in adulthood means settling for unhealthy relationships that can cause resentment, manipulation, and abuse. Here are some examples of healthy boundaries. Declining anything you don't want to do. Expressing your feelings responsibly. Talking about your experiences honestly. Replying in the moment. Addressing problems directly with the person involved rather than with a third party. Making your expectations clear rather than assuming people will figure them out. Personal boundaries refer to all seven types of boundaries that affect our personal well-being. Mental, emotional, material, internal, conversational, physical, and time. dig into those. Mental. Freedom to have your own thoughts, values, and opinions. I respect your perspective, although I don't agree. Emotional. How emotionally available you are to others. As much as I want to support you right now, I don't have the emotional capacity. Material. Monetary decisions giving or lending to others. I already lent you money last week, so not again for now. Internal. Self-regulation, energy expanded on self versus others. I've been social all week. I need the weekend to myself. Conversational. Topics that you do and do not feel comfortable discussing. I would rather not be a part of this conversation. Physical, privacy, personal space, your body. I prefer not to hug people I don't know. And time, how much time you spend with someone or someone doing something. I can only stay for 30 minutes. When we maintain healthy boundaries in all seven domains, we will thrive. But when others cross or violate our boundaries, There will be a personal cost if we don't address it. One domain refers to emotional boundaries, which determine how emotionally available you are to others. We all need support at different times when life hits us with unexpected events or just help to process the onslaught of micro stressors during the day, sometimes referred to as daily hassles. However, we can't always be there for people as we often have other priorities to attend to, like work, domestic responsibilities, or family responsibilities. As adults, we must take care of ourselves first. Self-care is the foundation of health, while putting others' needs before our own is a characteristic of codependency that can lead to burnout. When we don't maintain healthy emotional boundaries with others, we may feel resentful, guilty, and drained. It's perfectly okay to state your limitations to people who make demands of your emotional resources. If they push back against your boundaries or continue to violate them, then this shows your relationship may be off balance, problematic, or even toxic. If so, then restate your boundary and withdraw calmly. There's no need to over-explain yourself or apologize for setting boundaries, as everyone may say what they do and do not want to do. Maintaining healthy boundaries at work has become increasingly difficult with flexible working, remote and hybrid working, and technological progress. Setting boundaries at work begins during the interview process, where you can establish what kind of work practices you will accept especially accessibility during working hours, out-of-office hours, and remote working arrangements. Career Contessa offers eight tips for establishing healthy boundaries in the workplace. Number one, assess your personal boundaries first. 
These will be determined by your values and priorities. If you're not clear about your boundaries, then it's much easier for others to cross them or violate them, leading to discomfort, stress, and even resentment. Number two, communicate directly. Be upfront yet professional. Avoid getting involved in discussing your colleagues with each other. Let people know when you're available and how to handle emails that arrive in your inbox outside of work hours. Number three, create clear structures for your work, especially times for focused work, by letting your colleagues know when you don't want to be disturbed. Number four, keep your relationships professional. As tempting as it may be to become best friends with colleagues, it can lead to blurred boundaries and problems later on. Number five, delegate work when appropriate to manage your workload. Number six, get comfortable saying no. Number seven, take time off. And number eight, use technology to set and maintain work boundaries by keeping others informed and using shareable project management tools. Setting limits won't disrupt healthy relationships, says the author of Set Boundaries, Find Peace, a guide to reclaiming yourself. Nedra Glover Twab is a psychotherapist. If you struggle with setting boundaries, then this book is for you. It prioritizes the self-care we need to look after ourselves and others. The author uses real-life case histories from her therapeutic practice to illustrate a range of problems caused by poor boundaries. In each chapter, she offers exercises to help readers identify communication skill deficits that lead to poor boundaries and provides helpful tips to how to set and maintain boundaries. By setting boundaries in relationships, we also discover which relationships are healthy and which are not. As Twab explains, if friends, family members, or work colleagues push back against our boundaries by ignoring them, challenging them, or cutting us off, then the relationship was already in deep trouble and needed to end. However, boundaries are not walls. That behavior that erects walls, such as cutting people off without giving them the right to reply, or sometimes called ghosting, or a prolonged silent treatment, is not about setting healthy boundaries. It's emotionally abusive. Part two is a guide on how to set boundaries in all kinds of relationships, including family, romantic relationships, friendships at work, and with social media and technology use. This is all followed up by a self-assessment quiz to help you check your progress. Setting healthy boundaries is an essential life skill and an important self-care practice. Healthy boundaries create healthy relationships. While someone who's not used to setting boundaries might feel guilty or selfish when they first start, setting boundaries is necessary for mental health and well-being. Appropriate boundaries can look very different depending on the setting, but it's important to set them in all areas of life where you interact with others. Remember, while setting boundaries is crucial, it's just as important to respect others' boundaries, including parents, children, romantic partners, managers, co-workers, and anyone else we interact with. I have a conversational boundary, politics. Some who know I have this boundary assume it's because I don't watch the news or read the paper, so I can't possibly participate because I'm not informed. Wrong. That's what you get with assumptions. It's true, I'm not a news junkie, and I don't scour the internet looking for the latest opinion on what's wrong with the world today. But I'm making more of an intentional stand for my own self-care. I choose to spend my precious time with a positive investment in myself and others. You don't have to dig deep to find the negative, but sometimes you have to stretch to find the positive. Whatever you practice, you perfect. Whatever you seek, you shall find. I hope I'm communicating this in a kind and clear way. For me, I want my impact to be felt by the people I encounter with love, support, 
encouragement, and hope. Logan Haley helps us understand how to set boundaries, five ways to draw the line politely found at scienceofpeople.com. Knowing how to set boundaries is one of the most essential yet overlooked social skills. Boundaries are rooted in clear communication. As Brene Brown says, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. The more precise you can express your boundaries, the more likely your boundaries will be respected. While you may need to repeat yourself a few times, don't feel the need to apologize or explain your boundaries. Like an invisible fence around the perimeter of a yard, boundaries establish where your space ends and someone else's begins. If a dog can recognize and respect that perimeter, then so can everyone in your life. Though they aren't as blatantly clear as a fence, wall, or a no trespassing sign, healthy boundaries communicate to others what you will and will not tolerate. In short, boundaries empower you to take charge of your life. Personal boundaries are at the root of a fulfilled, well-balanced life. Without them, people can quickly lose themselves in their work, relationships, family obligations, or service to others. They can even wind up being exploited or taken advantage of by people who don't respect them. These borders help define what you're willing to say yes to and what you decided to say no to. They give you a sense of agency and sovereignty over your decisions. Like an internal compass, boundaries can all start with a gut feeling that tells you when you have the time and energy to devote to something versus when you need to say no. Good boundaries free you to live life on your terms. People with solid boundaries tend to have a lower level of stress and a higher self-esteem because they prioritize their own well-being. On the other hand, people without boundaries may inadvertently let others take advantage of them. They may lack self-confidence, a sense of purpose, or a clear identity to guide them through life. Counselor Dr. Dana Nelson writes, In work or in our personal relationships, poor boundaries lead to resentment, anger, and burnout. People without boundaries can be easily persuaded into things they don't want to do because they may be acting out of guilt or obligation rather than self-love. So here are some signs of healthy boundaries and then the opposite, which is a potential sign of an unhealthy boundary. Protect yourself from getting taken advantage of or vulnerable to being used or taken advantage of. A sign of a healthy boundary is owning your time. Unhealthy would be over committing your time to others and leaving little time for yourself. Healthy shows up as high self-esteem and self-respect, where unhealthy could be lower self-esteem and critical inner dialogue. Healthy would be prioritizing time for yourself, Unhealthy would be giving a lot of time to other people. You only take on responsibilities you can handle. You don't overcommit yourself if you have healthy boundaries. The opposite is feeling exhausted or burnt out by overwhelming commitments and responsibilities. You can set a healthy boundary by authentically saying no if you don't have the energy or capacity to do something instead of having a hard time saying no. Setting limits for others without bad feelings instead of feeling guilty for expressing your boundaries. Having a strong sense of identity and direction versus changing yourself to fit in with different people. Taking care of your own problems and understanding that you can't heal other people's issues for them instead of taking on other people's problems as your own. When you have a healthy boundary, you can clearly communicate your needs and wants, you prioritize self-care, and when you don't, you put other people's needs and wants before your own.
Suppose you're tired of living your life for other people or find yourself exhausted by all the commitments you've made to others. In that case, it's time to set some boundaries and reclaim the power of your time, energy, and well-being. Here are five effective ways to set healthy boundaries. Visualize and name your limits. The first and most important step to defining your boundaries is to make them concrete. Boundaries are often confusing and abstract because they feel invisible in our daily lives. By visualizing your boundaries and writing them down, you can get much more clarity on where you want to draw the line between you and other people. Set aside some time to reflect on the state of your life. Ask yourself these questions. What is causing me unnecessary stress or discomfort? What do I look forward to each day versus what do I dread? Who or what gives me energy? What areas of my life do I feel exhausted by? What makes me feel safe, supported, and valued? Draw a large circle on a blank piece of paper. Inside the circle, write everything that makes you feel safe and stress-free. For example, a daily routine, words of affirmation from your partner, hugs from your loved ones, leaving work stress at the office, clear communication from your loved ones, freedom to decide how to spend your time, Say no to energy vampires. Autonomy over your body. Now, on the outside of the circle, write down anything that causes you discomfort, pain, annoyance, or emotional exhaustion. These are the people or situations pushing the limits of your boundaries. For example, your mom telling you what to do with your life. Working after hours on projects instead of prioritizing self-care. Worrying about what certain people think about you. Your cousin asking to borrow money. Your coworker constantly dumping her relationship problems on you at lunch. Your roommate eating your food from your fridge. Your partner controlling who you talk to or hang out with. Strange people touching you without asking. Acquaintances asking deep or intimate questions about your life. This circle represents a visible manifestation of your limits. It's time to take anything outside the circle and determine how you can define a boundary that will prevent or eliminate those issues in the future. Openly communicating your boundaries. One of the biggest mistakes people make is setting boundaries in their minds, but not openly sharing them with the people in their life. Sometimes people assume that you should know their boundaries, but if they don't clearly communicate what lines they've drawn, how will you ever know when you've overstepped them? This can seem daunting and scary, but it can feel like a significant release once you get it out of the way. Brene Brown, the social psychology researcher, says, Clear is kind. Unclear is unkind. Once you know your boundaries, you have to communicate them. Take a deep breath, gather your resolve, and assertively express your needs in a kind, direct way. Here's how. I can only stay for an hour. Or, if you're going to be late, please let me know ahead of time. That would be a time boundary. I don't have the energy to help you with that request right now, but maybe this resource can help. Energy boundary. I understand you're having a hard time and I want to be there for you, but I don't have the emotional capacity to listen right now. Emotional dumping. It makes me feel uncomfortable when you touch or say that. If you can't respect my space, I'll have to leave. Personal space boundary. This isn't a topic I'm willing to discuss right now. Conversational boundary. I don't find those types of comments funny. Comment boundary. I understand we see things differently and I respect your opinion, 
but please don't force it on me. Mental boundary. Please ask me first before borrowing my possession, or I would appreciate it if you didn't touch my thing. Material boundary. I don't feel comfortable with you posting that on Instagram. Social media boundary. The more precise and direct you can communicate your boundaries, the easier it will be to uphold them. Boundaries are like the rules of a relationship. When they're displayed for all parties involved, it's much easier to respect them. So here's another way. Reiterate and uphold your boundaries. Like the invisible perimeter fence around a yard protects a dog from running into the street, Boundaries protect you from overextending your mental and emotional well-being. But the dog has to be trained not to cross that line, right? They have to understand where their yard begins and ends. It takes time, repetition, and patience. The same is true for human boundaries. Not everyone will understand or respect your boundaries the first time. It's essential to stand firm in your decision while kindly reminding them of your needs when necessary. A dog will get confused if the yard ends at the bushes one day but extends to the sidewalk the next. If someone doesn't initially respect your boundary, remind them, but stay consistent with your original decision. Here's a pro tip. Avoid shifting your boundaries for somebody else's comfort. If you said, I don't feel comfortable with you contacting me about work after hours, you probably don't want to send that message that says, sometimes it's okay for you to text me late at night. While it may be awkward or uncomfortable initially, a person who truly wants to be in your life will respect your decision. Don't be afraid to say no. Have you ever met someone who seemed to say yes to everything? Maybe it's you. People afraid to say no often end up with an overflowing plate of duties and responsibilities that they just can't seem to keep up with. They tend to forego their self-care as they frantically try to meet the deadlines and demands of all the people and things they said yes to. No is a powerful word. It sounds strikingly similar in dozens of languages and can be recognized by simple gestures or facial expressions. You're probably doing it right now. Yet so many people in the modern day have been programmed to feel guilty for their no's. In reality, to say no is to draw a line in the sand. It's an expression of courage, self-love, and sovereignty over your daily decisions. Remember that every yes and no shapes your reality. You have the power to choose how you'll spend your time and energy. If something doesn't feel right in your gut, you probably shouldn't do it. The word no is essential for healthy boundaries. Here's an action tip. Saying no doesn't have to be rude, but it also doesn't require an apology or an explanation. Notice where in your life you say, I'm sorry, I can't, or maybe let me get back to you, when you just mean to say no. Pay attention to how you can shift these simple conversations to more clearly draw a boundary instead of leaving another person waiting for a clearer answer. The clarity of your communication will ultimately benefit all parties involved. Take time for yourself. Amidst our fast-moving world, self-care can feel selfish or even frivolous. But the science of self-care is clear. Taking a load time for yourself is linked to more confidence, greater creativity, more emotional intelligence, and more emotional stability in challenging situations. It can even help prevent burnout. Here's an action tip. For the next month, set aside a solid two-hour block of time on your calendar each week specifically for me time. Let your close family and friends know that you won't be available during this time. 
whether you're cooking a healthy meal for yourself, getting outside, taking a rest, hitting the yoga studio, or lounging on the beach with a good book. Creating time for yourself is crucial for healthy boundaries. But what does self-care have to do with boundaries? Solitude allows you to reflect on your life and your values. The time you set aside for self-care can help bring more clarity into your relationships with other people, ultimately helping you define your boundaries. To many, this may seem selfish. Modern society's tendency towards self-sacrifice and workaholism has led a majority of people to dismiss their boundaries or sacrifice their well-being to please other people. Ironically, this can often have the opposite effect than they'd like. Self-care and healthy boundaries are not selfish, but they're a form of self-love that leads to deeper relationships and more fulfilling experiences. As the saying goes, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Healthy boundaries are a way to fill your cup so that you can offer more joy and help to the world. As I've mentioned in the past, I'm a codependent in recovery. Boundaries are essential when it's in your very nature to overstep. So my boundaries aren't just about people infringing on my personal space. It's about me infringing on theirs. I used to be quick with advice and biting at the bit to give direction. I also have the compulsion to overintroduce others, but that's another story for another day. A mentor of mine likened it to staying within your own hula hoop. You can create any visual you like, but you get the idea. Are you worrying about or are you trying to fix something that A, is not within your power, or B, none of your business? It's easy to justify your actions with the idea that you're just being helpful. But let's be honest. Did they ask for your help? Hmm. Let's take a listen to Brene Brown on boundaries, found at Andrea's A to Z Strategies, Health and Well-Being. One of the most shocking findings of my work was the idea that the most compassionate people I have interviewed over the last 13 years were also the absolutely most boundaried. Because they, so I'll give you a great definition of the, the, the definition of boundary that I use in the book. Boundary is simply what's okay and what's not okay. What I think we do is we don't set boundaries. We let people do things that are not okay or get away with behaviors that are not okay. Then we're just resentful and hateful. Me, I'd rather be loving and generous and very straightforward with what's okay and what's not okay. Um, and I did not, I, that I learned from the research. I was the exact opposite. I, I assumed for the first 35 years of my life that people were sucking on purpose just to piss me off. Mm-hmm. That's what I assumed. Um, that, yeah, right. Whether it was someone who worked for me or it was someone who, family member who was constantly like, I was always critical and judgy. And I was like, why are they choosing these things? Why are they making their choices? They should know better. And then when this thing came up for my therapist, what if people are doing the best they can? I thought my husband had the most beautiful answer to that question. He said, I'll never know whether people are doing the best they can or not. But when I assume people are, it makes my life better. So now I think I am not as sweet as I used to be, but I'm far more loving. It's not just some like technique so that you can do that. That's really like, a way of being to like nurture that soil of wholeheartedness. Yeah. Generosity to assume the best about people is almost an inherently selfish act because the life you change first is your own. Yeah. And so it's, so my question is big, B I G what boundaries need to be in place for me to stay in my integrity and make the most generous assumptions about you. But generosity can't exist without boundaries and we are not comfortable setting boundaries because we care more about what 
people will think and we don't want to disappoint anyone. We want everyone to like us and boundaries are not easy. Um, but I think they're the key to self love and I think they're the key to treating others with loving kindness. Sustaining. Sustaining. You can't, nothing is sustainable without boundaries. I think compassion and empathy are different things. And again, I'm relying on my data for this. I think compassion is a deeply held belief that we're inextricably connected to each other by something rooted in love and goodness. I call that God. Not everybody calls that God. Um, my dad would call it fission. Um, fission? Fission? Is it fishing? No, there's no G in fission. Um, but I think it, compassion is a deeply held belief. I think empathy is the skill set to bring compassion alive. So empathy is something we can teach. I mean, it's something we've taught our kids since they were very little. It's about how to communicate that deep love for people in a way so that people don't know they're not alone. I think there's a lot of new and interesting information out there about empathy not being a good thing, about that, you know, there's, there's an argument that says, you know, if Travis is in struggle and I practice empathy with you, I'm taking on your darkness and it leads to burnout and it leads to, but empathy is not feeling for somebody. It's feeling with them. It's touching a place in me that knows where you've been. So I can look at you and say, me too, brother. You're not alone in this. Um, and I find empathy to be infinite. I think it gives back tenfold what you put out. It's sustaining. Like if, it's you, sustaining. if you've done the work and uh, you have your boundaries, mm -hmm. I mean, you could tread that water forever and never get tired. Okay, so empathy. I'm quoting Travis here, empathy. If you've done your work and set your boundaries, you can tread that water forever. Yeah. Amen. It's not finite and it keeps giving back to us. And so this idea that, but, but here we go back to where we started this conversation. Empathy minus boundaries is not empathy. Compassion minus boundaries is not genuine. Vulnerability without boundaries is not vulnerability. So you see that there's a huge riff here, which is boundaries are freaking important. And it's not, they're not fake walls. They're not separation. Boundaries are not division. They're respect. There's here's what's okay for me and here's what's not. We've been talking about holding firm and pushing your boundaries. And we've talked about holding firm, but when should we push past? Remember, boundaries can protect you today and as you grow and evolve. Well, over at loveselfcare.com, I found some ideas on pushing past your limits, when and why to do it. Why do you need to push past your limits as a person? Well, we all have our limits. Think of them like fences. Some of these fences are real and some of them are imagined. There are times when it makes sense to push past what we perceive to be our limits so that we can grow. There are many different types of limits, physical, emotional, and mental, just to name a few. To get outside your limits, you need to think about your comfort zone. Your comfort zone are the things that are so easy for you that they've become second nature. That is your comfort zone, safe, comfortable, and familiar. This can also become boring, unmotivating, and make you feel stuck. What you think are your limits exist just outside of your comfort zone. Limits can have all kinds of boundaries and can also be movable. What was once your limit can become your new comfort zone. Make sense? Most growth comes from being solidly outside of your comfort zone. If it feels uncomfortable, in some sense, you're probably outside of your comfort zone. When you're working out for the first time in a while and you're starting to get a little out of breath, you're outside of your comfort zone. When you're trying something new and you get a little frustrated, 
you're outside of your comfort zone. Obviously, we wouldn't get anywhere as individuals or as society if we didn't step outside our comfort zone and push the limits on occasion. Pushing your limits can be a good thing and actually healthy. Why, you can probably push past your limits more than you think you can. We also have a tendency, especially as adults and even women, to think we can do less when we can actually do more. Usually, those excuses are just excuses. If it's time you're lacking, make a bargain and prioritize your time. If it's money you're lacking, it's time to get creative. You want to try and push past your limits when you feel outside of your comfort zone, but you know this is the next best step for you. Another example of when to try something new is when you feel stuck. And you want to take that leap of faith when you know it makes sense, but you just can't see the whole road. Often, you just need to get going and the path will be there. Pushing past your limits initially can be scary work. You may feel like you're in over your head, like you're crazy or like people think you're stupid. If you feel ready to push past some of your own self-limiting beliefs, but are scared to try... Start with the baby steps. You don't have to run a marathon. You can start by running down the block. Build up your confidence as you go. Before you know it, you'll be beyond your fence and out into the world. If you want to share encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they're not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, create boundaries that help protect you as you self-reflect and self-nurture, but then expand and push past boundaries testing self-limiting thoughts to experience true growth. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. I stumble through until the path